I am Lillian Brock Fleming, um, 1971 graduate of Furman and a 1975 graduate of Furman University. Very good friend of Joseph Vaughn. We were uh, neighborhood friends. Um, we worked together in the South Carolina Education Association. Uh, he's the godfather of one of my children. And um, just overall good friend. So I'm Bobette Jones. I am a major gift officer with Parent Philanthropy and Engagement. And I've been at Furman um, right at two years. My name is June Thomas, and uh, I attended Furman as June Manning, 1967-68, my freshman year. My name is Marcus Teeth, and Javon was my third cousin. So I met him when I arrived um, in the fall of 67. I didn't see him when I was on campus during the um, summer of 66. He looked at me and said, well, aren't you as cute as a button? So, yeah. <laughs> yes, I definitely remember meeting Joe. He was kind of unforgettable. Once you met him, you didn't forget him. Joe was a human being who loved life. He loved living. He loved people. He loved words. He was a wordsmith. And that's the reason I guess he was an English teacher, but he was wonderful in explaining things and in, and in saying stuff. He, took, he would tickle us because his vocabulary was so extensive. Oftentimes some of the, um, the big robust athletes would say something about him not participating in football or something of that nature. And then he would go on to this long, long um, discourse. And in the discourse, he would use all of these huge words they had no idea they were being insulted, uh, but that was okay. And uh, Joe went right on. So um, Joe was a natural extrovert and he, um, he did very well in the limelight. He actually kind of drew attention to himself. <laughs> so when you look at his list of activities, he was in so many activities. He was, um, he was on, um, the color guard, he uh, was in plays, um, he Pershing rifles, but I remember best his, just his friendship, um, getting to know him, the black students, there were very few of us and we sort of hung together. He was always lively. He did not believe in dull dead stuff. He became a cheerleader. Oh, that I was like, oh, Joe, I'm gonna tell your mama, uh, et cetera, because he loved the little cheer. F you, one time, F you. I said, oh my God, I'm gonna tell your mama. And he said, she's not gonna say anything. I said, well, I'll just tell the pastor of the church. He said, oh, now wait a minute, that that's another story. Anyway, so um, he became a cheerleader because he got tired of being sitting up there being dull and boring and dead. He said, listen, the football players can't play. If we don't cheer. I remember that one game, he came up to me just as exuberant off the field as he was on. So on the field, he's sort of like doing all these antics with the cheerleaders and, you know, tossing all these girls and white girls, of course, you know, tossing all these girls around and uh, kind of leading all this cheering because he really was genuinely a spirit booster. And then he comes up to me afterwards, or maybe it was just during a, um, a period when they were pausing or something. And he comes up to me and he's speaking to me and he's just as animated in the conversation as he was on the field. So it was like the field was, was his real persona and he couldn't let go of it. So he comes off and he talks to you and he's just as enthusiastic and, just as boisterous, so that was that was something. He was like that. Basically, we were the first black girls on campus, so it was kind of a an awkward situation for us. I mean, there were only three black girls on campus. Uh, we were in the same dorm room, so we were all rooming together, um, and 
Joe, I found out later, had actually advocated for us to, to come to campus. So he was, was trying to talk to the president and the other administrators to get them to, um, to accept more black students so that he wouldn't be the only one. He was a spectacular one, <laughs> but he actually had um, clout with President Blackwell and with the other administrators. And he was actually advocating for us to, to be admitted. I do remember when he got us all involved in the um, uh, protest against the, the killing of the eight African-American students by the Highway Patrol at South Carolina State University. And uh, that was a whole different uh, program. It was, he said, you know, we can't just, you know, we have it okay, but we just can't uh, allow stuff like this to happen and say nothing. And so we protested down in front of the courthouse. Uh, needless to say, hadn't checked with your parents to let them know some things. So my mother was extremely distraught that evening when she saw me on the news with a sign, uh, with the picket sign on, and the highway patrol was all, you know, to put everybody was surrounding us as if we had done something. So it was not exactly a wonderful time in conversation with my mother, but fortunately for me, Furman did call and say that they were watching out for us. And so that did help. But she's saying, you and Joe stay out of trouble. And I'm like, oh, mama, you don't know Joe. <laughs> trouble is his middle name. <laughs> So I met Mr. Vaughn in my, I want to say my ninth grade year um, at Malden High School. So as I matriculated through Malden High School, he became a, not just a, a great teacher, but he was a mentor. He was like a father, a big brother, just all in one. Again, he loved the students, all students. And you could just tell that because of the way that the students was drawn to him. Um, he wanted to make sure that uh, learning was fun and that you got what you needed in order to be able to move to the next level. During my tenure there at Malden, I was actually senior class president. And I remember Mr. Vaughn um, sitting me down and helping me write my speech because I had to speak at graduation. But he was just so committed and so um, enthusiastic um, just wanted social justice and equality for all students. And so Mr. Vaughn was just an advocate, not just for minority students, but again, all students. He just made learning so much fun and he was just a joyous uh, type guy. He was like a comedian again. <laughs> Mr. Vaughn was just, he was just so enthusiastic and very, very social. So um, as students went to pet rallies, he was there at the pet rallies with us in the student section um, as if he was a student. So again, even though we respected him and knew that he was an adult, he, he put himself on our level as a student. Um, and I think that that's why he was so successful in, um, in being such a great educator, mentor and friend to so many. It is just really a blessing and a joy that God allowed our, our paths to connect. And I can just um, see what he felt or feel what he felt um, back when he attended Furman. He, he didn't get to come to Furman right away. They sent him off to Johnson C. Smith University, which is located in Charlotte, just to see if he could to, 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 to be able to do the, the college work. And um, as he did that college work, then the Board of Trustees secretly voted um, for him to be the first African-American student admitted into Furman. When, um, as a student here on campus, I was not aware of Joseph's connection, you know, to the student body and to like, you know, our history as a whole. It wasn't until we were covering the Civil Rights Act and the movement and Dr. Paulson was going through some of the things here, um, Furman's history, it was actually really interesting because I was in the front row and I finished the name for her because I've always known his name, but for some odd reason, intuitively, I felt it might actually be the same person. And then I said under my breath, oh, that's my cousin. And she's like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, let me check on that though. Once I asked about Joseph, 
uh, you know, it gave us a sense of you know, understanding about him. Me researching, interviewing my great grandmother before she passed, um, my other uh, cousins and you know aunts and uncles, um, my father, my grandmother, you know, all have given a great you know um, testament as to who Joseph was, who he has been, um, the things that he did, the things that he asked from them, and you know, of course, challenging them to be better than what they were. Uh, continuously you know, asking them to excel in education and follow their dreams. Um, so yeah, like the more and more I was able to talk with people, you know, especially my great grandmother, the more I was able to learn about Joseph and who he was and his experiences here on campus and family life. Once I got the dialogue started, it gave us a great opportunity to bring up all the other things about Joseph that, you know, I never knew. Um, how he dressed, you know, his interaction with other people, his personality, um, his liveliness, you know, his high, you know, energy, you know, his aspirations of doing great things, the way he would challenge my aunts and uncles to do better in school and so on and so forth. Oh, it's just, uh, Joe, gosh, I miss that exuberance and I miss you. Just thank you for your life. Thank you for showing me different things that um, that we can move from the southern side and from a poor side of town, but we didn't have to carry the poor side of town with us into our attitude and perspective with the rest of the life. So, I, you know, I just want to tell him thank you for just being Joe. I don't think in his mindset he wanted to desegregate, even though we needed that. He just wanted the same opportunity that other students had. And I think that he fulfilled that dream um, and that goal um, by attending Furman and graduating from Furman and then bringing what God had given him to students in the community. So he wanted to just make his community better. Having this plaza now dedicated to Joseph's memory, I would say it won't only serve as a beacon of light and inspiration for people of color, but I would say it's applicable to every student of every race, of ethnicity. It allows them to see that someone had the courage to be able to come forward and do what, you know, was right. To actually not worry about the fears of being, you know, as he said, you know, a majority of one, but one who actually was able to just be himself. Joseph wanted to be known as Jovan. He didn't want to be known as the first African-American student. He wanted to be known and assimilated into the Furman community. Furman was not ready for Joseph Vaughn, but he helped to break them in.